Hi everybody and big welcome to Alanis Deck Tech, a Simic creature focus build where we are quite heavily investigating. With us today we have Proxy who's been uh, building this snake elf scout. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, I love this little guy. Gal, snake, person. Snake, ping. Why do you love it? Like, why is it good? So it has a lot of like little niche applications, but also it's a sort of like a cheap, more proactive creature. I'm a person who, who always loves love green, but I also like decks that are more interactive or ironically just deny resources altogether. I'm not really more an aggro person. And this sort of like lets you play like a sort of flexible game plan, sort of like a toolbox strategy. You know, I'm, I'm known for playing a lot of Sisse. This is not as toolbox as Sisse, but no. as you guys may see, we have a lot of clones and clones sort of like let you play the board a little better but also uh, we have like some other tools that are sort of toolboxy so there are two things th this this creature does it will investigate whenever a creature comes into play under your control and you can basically pay to mana and sacrifice that clue to draw a card yeah but you can, can also sacrifice x clues and look at target opponent's uh, x library and pick a permanent card with mana less from among them and it, it put it into play under your control how do you usually play this or in your experience when you're piloting the stick how does how do you usually utilize this ability the second ability is a lot more useful than uh you may like initially think it's not just a you you will crack it for like one or two you're, and you're not going to like necessarily use it to like get something you're just going to use it to like deter someone from like vampiric worldly mm. or whatever because then they can't get like a lot of the best pieces are like oracle breach dock side you know just leaving up two clues to be like uh you can't you can't even tutor those i'm just gonna snatch them. um and if you don't snatch them and they're like a big piece they get tucked to the bottom anyway and they don't have them. yeah this is very good versus top deck uh, manipulation yeah surprise that's that's one of like the niche things i was talking about i could do but most of the time you're actually not gonna activate it unless you're like trying to deter someone or for like four or more which is will typically hit a permanent in the right like list you're targeting sure if you're targeting like um, I don't know, like a Nala, a Nala wizards. I mean, sure, if you hit their spell seeker off of their four, that's great, and you maybe ruin them, but you're not gonna hit many creatures. Yeah, they usually play mostly instant sorceries. And you can't take yeah. lands from this, right? Non land, yeah, no, no lands. lands. Yeah, yeah, no lands. If you could take lands, this would be a lot better. But you can basically just take our rocks. Mm -hmm. Very, they don't play that many enchantments. Get rocks. You you can get things that are not just creatures, but uh, we really like creatures, rocks, um, mm -hmm. and the enchantments aren't really gonna like most enchantments you'll run into are stacks based or like you're gonna have to sack them anyway because they're gonna be like a fish. But you know, you can you can get things off of them. But it's it's really we're kind of banking off of a lot of the first ability that investigate mm. when a thing ETBs is a lot it's very simple. Yeah, draw a card. Two mana draw a card. Yeah, but we we leverage that because we, we rarely do the I mean you will sack your clues. You will do that. You draw cards, not just activate Lawness. But you're you're typically just kinda gonna use them to you know, storm into other plays, either off of Urza or Manufacturer. So there, there is another Simic commander out there, Kinan the Bounder Prodigy. How, what is yes. the difference, so to say? What, what do you, why would you play Kinan over the other? Also, you can also sometimes consider Frasius as a potential, more, more than just Simic, but like, what is the difference between these ones? So uh, that's a that's a very tough question. And while I can give my best answer, a lot of Simic generals, uh, at least in CDH, I mean, there's some varied over the whole pool, but in mm -hmm. CDH, they're they're sort of similar. Do like do like a mid rangey thing, make infinite mana, blow them out with your commander as an outlet or from an incidental outlet. And it's really just I feel how you want to like approach your game plan. I'm not sure if all of these decks are drastically different. There's different ways to interact with them. Even even though we are like a creature focused like list we can sort of like regurgitate our deck our deck a lot with uh endurance uh and some other cards ken can sort of do that too but he's more focused on like having dorks that make mana rather than like you know just sort of like regurgitating value as it enters and leaves the board but thrasios he's just he's he's gonna he's gonna be maybe the best simic general until he's not in our format so let, we'll just leave him alone so how does this deck you win i've heard you're going for for this little combo, Korean Ranger and Ashaya Soul of the Wild. Yes. So the safest sort of thing to do is to have like a dork that makes two or more mana so that you can go infinite mana before you try to get people uh, with Lanus. 
Uh, but you can just use, in a pinch, the Ashaya Ranger combo to just get infinite clues and then, you know, shotgun someone with Lanus and hope to get, like, you know, some bomb. Some decks run, you know, a bomb that'll get you out of that, like, uh, it'll just get, like, your breach and then, like, cast a thing out of your graveyard that gets you out of it or uh, yeah. something or the other. But the safest is, you know, have a dork that makes two or more mana. And then, you know, you, you draw your deck. Yeah, you, you make infinite treasures this way. And if that dork produces two more mana, you have infinite mana, you draw your deck. Exactly. And then you can simply win with the final of Devastation, I guess. Clean and... Exactly. Just play your deck, or play all your creature base swing after you finale for like 10,000. It's You may, some people may call it win con list, but there are loops, and win con list is like, you know, you don't actually have these loops. Yeah. Are there any other ways to, like, is, are there any other combos to go for with Lonis, or, or is this like D1, so to say? There are sort of two different, well, th three-ish different lines. This My particular list only like really goes with one, maybe one and a half, depending on how you, how you define the third line. The other sort of like main one that a lot of people run uh, are these are these two little guys. Well, one big guy and then a, then a flying little guy. Urza, classic, uh, you know, whenever it ETBs, make a car instruct, then he can tap an untapped artifact to make a blue mana. Uh, Shrieking Drake uh, says whenever it comes in, it turns a creature you control to its owner's hand. So, you're gonna have Urza on field, or my bad, Urza on field, you're gonna have Urza on field, cast Drake, let Drake enter, and it doesn't really matter the order in which you send the Drake back to your hand, but you're gonna make a clue that you're then gonna use to pay for your Drake to then make infinite clues. There'll be tapped clues, but Lonis doesn't care if they're tapped. You will also have an infinite, uh, infinite uh, construct with this. Yes, you will have a, a big, a, a giant construct. Then you will shotgun a player, then use something to either get out of that, or you will, if you have set up like an academy manufacturer before that, you can just sack all yours. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel like academy manufacturer seems like a, a really good card inside this deck, like an out to include for Lonis, I guess. Yeah, you can actually replace uh, Urza with this and do the same thing because you will just get uh, a treasure yeah. in that. Loop. Yeah, and you so you will basically make instead of running, yeah, you you will make infinite food and infinite treasures. But you use the treasures basically. No, sorry, you don't oh, make infinite, infinite treasures. Food includes. Yeah, but if you do have Academy Manufacturer and Ursa in play, you do get infinite mana. Yes. And then you you don't need to sacrifice all your clues. You could basically draw your entire deck instead as well. Exactly. So there are some little different ways to puzzle it together, so to say. Yes, it's a lot of uh. A lot of things are sort of layered uh, to where like a lot of pieces can like switch out from one mm -hmm. another. Drake is fairly integral, but again, you can technically switch out Drake for you know Eternal Witness plus an Essence Flux. I mean, there's some things with Spellseeker, but they're a little convoluted. I have a question. Is the reason you're playing Lotus Cobra, because with Lotus Cobra, Korean Ranger will enter as a land, and you will make a mana, and with this you have infinite mana. This is like a dork in this case. Correct. Um, a lot of our deck is very low to the ground, so you know, just the free mana from Cobra to play out your dorks that'll trigger Lawness is great, but also, you know, Provisioner and Lotus Cobra can replace Lawness. Mm. in the ranger combo yeah uh, i've noticed that you're playing a lot of these copy creature effects is there's a is there a reason why you want to clone something so much yes so the the biggest reason uh which i i have personally found worth it um but there have been arguments that it may be you know not worth it due to it's not you're not actually winning you're just like sort of storming with creatures is the math that happens with replacement effects uh, and uh, Academy of Manifact. So, obviously, with Lawness, it says you're going to make a clue of food and a treasure when it ETBs. If you have a clone or just a second copy of this from something or whatever, it, you will you will do that, but then you will use that replacement effect and replace each of those instances with a clue, a food, and a uh, treasure. So you'll make three of each. So if you had uh, two of them, you'd make nine artifacts in total, which is nice. Three of them are food, three of them are clues, three of them are treasure. Yeah, so basically costing a creature will give you three treasures. Basically turning every land or elf into a ritual, a dark ritual, almost oxide. Uh, al almost every deck, not every deck, every good a uh, creature in your deck is pretty much free after you get the Sedic and Manufact. But if you get another 
if you get another clone or a way to make another manufacturer, then you're kind of, you're probably just going to just keep uh, casting creatures and clones to go through your deck until you get a win. If you get a third manufacturer, you're good. So how this basically performs is all the cards here are like good. Like Phantasmal Image is great. Academy Manufacturer is already included. The two clones there on the sides are a little bit iffy. But in general, what this is like value engine that could turn into like a plan B strange combo storm attempt, so to say. Yeah, you can do some really sneaky things too. Because uh, I guess my one big mention that I that I think is like really cute is Glass Pool Mimic and its interaction with uh, Ghostly Flicker. Um, you can mm. play it as the land side, but then like if you want like to actually like use the clone for a more relevant thing you're like all right i'm a ghostly flicker the land part and you know some creature you know it'll come in clone something that's one of your creatures maybe your manufacturer maybe something else who knows i mean i, I have won games with it but it's not like it's just a thing you can do with it. you're also running besides ghostly flicker two more spells here you're running essence flux and replicate and also R rubidate and replicate rubidate and replicate yeah this card is fire it is the it's the most fire card for how bad it actually feels to have in your list so the cool thing is is that the instant part of it is not worthless because of how good no. oracle is yeah 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 <laughs> and yes. dark side um for how good oracle and dark side is the instant part is not worthless but in the case that it's just like you know rotting in your hand you will just use it to clone like you know a, a good thing in your board probably your manufacturer of course that's what you're hoping mm. um but a thing to note it is a token lanis will not trigger off of the token you need a follow-up plan you can't just yeah can't just like really nilly cast on it i see i see but why are you playing so many like why do you want them so you want things that can sort of like it generally at least for me some people don't run as many cards like this generally in cdh as i do but i like cards that can sort of like fits multiple scenarios mm. you're not really gonna know the kind of pod you're gonna sit in mm. essence flux isn't amazing like fantastic at countering a spell or like gaining you acting as a ritual or whatever but it can sort of act sometimes as a counter spell when you need a particular piece and it can sort of act like a ritual mm. um by like flickering anything while you have a mana positive like dude out like provisioner on like a, a land creature or you know whatever something but also you can just incidentally win off of some things because we like etbs so like again I've, I've sort of mentioned but if you just have you know you like ewit sort of in the deck because you it's hard to interact with non-creatures in our graveyard in green and blue i guess instance but like you know cards in general it's kind of hard ewit's pretty good at that but since we already like urza and manufacture in our lists and if we don't like if someone like messes with our ranger or messes with our like you know something with us ewit can sort of replace that with essence flux and a lot of the times ghostly flicker because you'll just like target a land like gaia's cradle or like another dude can't Google. you target the uh, if you have ursa in play you have eternal witness in play and you have your your lawn is in play of course doesn't that go infinite because you're going to flicker ursa that is going to make a construct and a trash clue you're going to flicker eternal witness yeah. That will also make a in a clue. So you make three treasures, which is three mana to recast flicker once more. You not you don't go infinite, but you do go infinite constructs that are tapped. Yeah, you you and that's and a lot of times the uh the infinite just having the infinite artifacts will get you there because something on your field will help you benefit from that. Either you'll just tap Lonis and grab a bomb from somebody. The dream is just to grab a Rosiketh from someone. I'm getting a little bit worried about this creature. I mean... Yes. So he is terrifying. Um, yeah. Just in general, of course. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, very good in general, too. Yeah, every deck fears it. So, so. But I have a feeling that this deck is almost feeding it regarding of the, pot the potential we're, artifact production here. We're feeding it, but not as bad as you might think. Um, the cool thing is we can sack all of our clues almost... Always with Lawness. We don't need to have man up for that. It does suck that we really like manufacture, and we will sort of just have incidental clues sometimes. But a cool thing that we can do with both Wearer of Invention and Court of Calling is sort of like steal their dock sides. Um, because we run both Phantasmal Image and uh, Phyrexian Metamorph. But 
And, you know, it's nice to clone Docksides, but that's about it. We can't really avoid feeding Docksides. We like treasures, we like clues, we like things that are yeah. artifacts. At least you can sacrifice, like, all clues by just tapping Lawness without paying mana for it. So that's something. Yeah, that's that is that's the big one. And, and we can run, like, Null Rod effects if we want to. Yeah, you can play through them. Yeah, we're not actually that hurt by Null Rod and Collector Oof. In fact, uh, my suggestion, if you don't super like the clone aspect, is you would add Null Rod effects. Because both Urza and the sort of passive value from Lawness get around Nolan. So question. I've noticed that you're playing Mystic Sanctuary and Vesuva. And I'm just guessing Vesuva is going to copy Mystic Sanctuary or maybe something different. But what's the purpose behind these lands here? This is a great, this is a great question. Mm. This is a, this is great. So it's not actually meant to copy Mystic Sanctuary. It exists to copy like generally good lands, but it's not just in there for that. Again, a thing that, and it may, it may be a pet card. I like it and it has worked for me great. But so a Shia will turn like your general creatures into into lands and a lot of the times you're still looking to like combo yeah combo out with gonna... with manufacturer so Are, is, we'll... so is is Vesuva just another manufacturer clone some not it's not just that it's just a thing that you can do and that will sometimes win you the game you have to be aware of it that's why You're... crop rotation it's not why crop rotations in the deck it's a I love ritual. it I love it it's cute it's very cute it's very weird <laughs> but yeah it actually cool. also triggers Lawness. Yeah, because it'll enter as the creature. That's true. But again, a lot of times you will just play it as a tapped ancient tomb because that's how you play games. Currently testing the deck, uh, I still like as it plays. I currently think I'm running the two best lines. Mm -hmm. But sanctuary is to like sort of like do some loops with ghostly flicker as well. Use ghostly flicker to you know flicker the sanctuary. You'll get this this back. Uh, and some sometimes you can like use Lawness to crack the clue you get to draw the flicker and then recast it. But it may just be too cute. It may just need too many pieces. But but st but still, I mean, ghostly flicker is like it's a decent card. It's not bad. You can find use for it, and it's definitely good inside a ETB deck. This, this is kind of is. I mean, you want creatures to enter to make clues. You want you have a bunch of various creatures in the deck that have ETB effect, and Mystic Sanctuary is also just a decent overall card. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. If they, if they may just be incidentally good enough that you run them, but it... yeah, yeah, and then suddenly they have a cool combo to puzzle together. Exactly. Why should you pick up this deck? Like, why why is Slon is strong? What is making it good? So, sort of like the uh, the appeal for why I like Lawness uh, is I like decks that can sort of like endure through a lot of interaction should should that game happen or win fast should you need to do that. And typically I play five color decks for that, but Lawness sort of has done that in Simic. You will sort of just generate a bunch of incremental value uh, that you can use to rebuild should you get interacted with. And if you are not interacted with, you're just going to use that value you occurred to just win on the spot. So some other Simic decks are good at rebuilding, but as I did play a lot of Kinnon, um, and I played a lot of Momir Vague way back in the day, like way back in the day. Yeah, that, that deck isn't that good to rebuild. Yeah. Yeah, you just you just sort of get like blown out immediately. Uh, but it's uh, Kenan has some good rebuild potential, but the issue is when he uses his passive value, he's going to put the thing into play. With Lawness, you can sort of like wait and like if someone like Null Rod effects, you can like oh I'm gonna sack as many clues as I can to see what like I can I can do with. Or if someone board wipes, you can just sack clues and draw cards. Where Kenan is putting things into play, that is also getting board wiped. Exactly. So while I'm not sure which of the two is faster. Kinnon's probably I would probably like have to give it to him Lawness like will like you have to keep answering Lawness like if you can if you a Lawness player can play their general and has creatures in their deck they can probably rebuild mm. uh, after losses and I have a feeling games can be really fun with this commander as well because all of your games will kind of be a little bit unique it's not the same thing over and over again because you're you're actually playing with your opponent's decks a little bit at the very least the theft part is relevant like you knowing like who you're going against is actually a real important part of the deck because mm. sometimes you will just be able to like you know you'll know someone has an oracle in their list you'll be like all right i'm 
I'm gonna blow my load and like shotgun a Lannis to get their orc. I won't really have a game plan after that, but you know, if I get their oracle, I'll be able to win after that. It also hurts their them. I mean, removing their oracle from their from their deck is good. Exactly. So what is this commander's weakness? What should you think about when you're building it? Like what do you need to like build for? So the three sort of biggest things, two of them are going to be very standard, uh, that sort of Lana struggles with is one, board wipes for creatures, because we're sort of still a creature deck. Board wipes for low CMC stuff, because we're still fairly low uh, to the ground. But then also anything that's the sort of a rule of law, except for deafening silence. We can sort of get around deaf. But we, we want to be playing cards into each other. Both of our main combos uh, involve around like recasting a one drop over and over. ETB hate is but that's less common i think this is is a board wipe you could run into but cooling ritual is even quite rare i mean people have been dropping board wipes more and more in the current meta so to say so I, it's true. it is a weakness but it's not that much of a problematic thing right now i think yes the only reason i mentioned both of like those kinds of board wipes above uh, rule of law effects is because you can still play around the rule of law effects you can still play with them in play. You're just hurt by them a good decent bit as a Simic deck. Because unlike Kinnon, who can cheat the stuff into play, you can, like, you're putting them in your hand to play. Yeah, but I guess, I mean, this feels like a very grindy commander. So going into that rule of law game is, isn't is that big of a problem. It's not awful. Always. Yeah. yeah. It's not awful. So what's kind of cool is that if there's a null rod in play, like you mentioned, you can have a null rod and collect roof inside this deck. You can still activate Lawness and use your clues that way. Or if there is a cursed yes. totem and this isn't in play, you can still crack your clues. So you're exactly. and it's 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 very rare that both are in play together at the same time, even though it could happen. And when they are, it's usually bad for the whole table, not just Yeah, yeah. I mean then then you're probably in a very good spot anyway, because this is a creature yeah, deck yeah. and you can just smash faith. Yes. yes. A Cheyenne Karn strikes are real big. Um yeah. this one we do care about more than Nolrod, but we, we can play under both. Yeah, definitely. So when you're going into a game, how how should you think? What is your priority? What are you mulliganing for? What are you trying to achieve in the early stage of the game? Okay, so you can you can be pretty aggressive with your mulligans. Lawness, you can you can really piggyback off Lawness since he's only two mana and he will get you card advantage. Um, you can like aggressive mulligan to four sometimes; it'll be fine as long as you can get like a turn like one Lawness somehow and have some follow up. You need some sort of creature to follow up. Typically, you are just going to like try to focus to have Lawness probably a tur probably on board your first turn, then either a tutor or a piece sort of like Cobra, a clone, or, uh, you know, the array of Urza, Shia, whatever, to follow up from there. And then you'll usually draw into, like, whatever. Don't keep, like, five land hands with, like, two pieces of interaction. Don't do that. You know, if you have a creature and survival, you may, you're probably good with that hand, as long as you can play out the survival rule. It feels like this deck has a bunch of various game plan possibilities depending on the hand as it is yes it, in the end it's an adaptive deck that has multiple variants of combos multiple variants of grindy engines and a lot of interaction so exactly. you're, you're usually quite fine you just want a hand that is doing something explosively early game kind of. yes you need a very your turn one is probably your which is for most decks but especially for lanus you need a very strong turn one you're not you're not wanting to and the thing you really don't want to do and it's the thing i did a bunch and it'll feel natural because you've played a bunch of other decks that aren't this cheap um you don't want to just play a dork turn one you will want to keep your dork for like you'll want to play lanus for your dorks sure if you can play like two or three dorks turn one sure play like your three dork hand turn one before lanus otherwise you want to save your dorks for the follow-up play with lanus it may feel a little slower but you want, you know, acceleration at the beginning of the game, uh, any way to put out Lannis anyway. Hopefully you'll have some mana to follow up. That first clue, that what that first clue to deter people from using, like, uh, uh, yeah, their yeah, tempo-based yeah, the top deck tutor is really important. Because a lot of people will keep their opening opening hands around, like, a Vampiric tutor, Worldly tutor, Enlightened tutor. Yeah, and using, having this early game as an interaction is very good for delaying that. Threat. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to take an extra look into Lannis, there's actually a Discord dedicated of talk about brewing the commander and chatting with other people's minds and tricks there's a link in the description below for that discord we have a few active people but 
the two people that are sort of like uh, known for Lannis on from the database. I'm sure your, your viewers may know the Deckless database that you know curates CDH decks. Uh, we do have Blaze and Fable. Who both of their lists are on the deck base. They say hi to people. Uh, you chat with them. Pick their brains. I've picked their brains before. Their lists are also great. I know I like my list more, obviously, but I think that, I mean, that's just, I think you should if you've built a list, <laughs> I think. What did they think about the Suva? So we... It would, the debate. Blaze was not Blaze was Blaze was not part of the Discord when I brought up both the Suva and the Thespian stage. But Fable thought it was uh, hilarious, uh, and I believe he tried it. I don't I don't think he has it currently. I'm pretty sure he does not have it. There are some other players that are on the Suva though. I know that. Thank you, Proxy, for coming here, sharing your experience with Lonis, and also sharing what you've learned from the Discord with others as well. Yeah, it was great. Thank you for having me. Take care, everybody. See you next time. I'm done with the Discord. Yes. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.